brothers, my sisters, we are gathered here this morning in this beautiful masjid in order for us to speak about some aspects of the life of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And who was he? Known as Afdalul Khalqi wa Akramul Rusuli, the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah Almighty has given you and I the opportunity to consider ourselves from the followers and the ummah of the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then indeed we are honored. In fact, the greatest honor, if you were to ponder for a moment that you and I have is the connection to the greatest of all creation and above that, the connection to the Creator Himself. Allah Almighty carefully chose the lineage of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. From Adam Alayhi Salam, coming down the DNA, as we would say today, the precise lineage, male and female, how it would be and how it was, Allah had not only known it, but planned it so meticulously that when He says, this is the best, it is the best. The knowledge of Allah, Allah Almighty knows that which is happening, that which happened, that which will happen. That's the knowledge of Allah. But beyond that, that which will not happen if it were to happen, how it would have happened is the knowledge of Allah. Surah Al-Kahf mentions this, where Allah Almighty speaks of how Al-Khidr, did three things that were not understood by Musa alayhi salam. And later on, he was told, if we had let this be the way it was, something negative would have happened. Therefore, Allah knew that if it carried on the way it was, which in the knowledge of Allah, it was never going to carry on because it stopped. You see what we're saying? But Allah knew if it did carry on, how it would have carried on. Because that was going to be, had it been negative, Allah says, we blocked it there and then. And that was the knowledge of Allah, Allah alone. Ma lam yakun, idha kana, kaifa yakunu, Allahu Akbar. It's amazing. People say, you know, I wanted to buy this business. Well, Allah blocked it. One day when you meet Allah, you can say, if I had bought that business, show me what would have happened. Subhanallah. Same applies to marriage. Many of us, you're young, you're getting married. This didn't work, that didn't work, the other one worked. Show me if I were to marry that person, what would have happened? Allah says, you know, we blocked it as a favor for you. Sometimes you lose your children at a young age. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one after the other, his children passed on in his lifetime. Besides one, Fatima radiallahu anha, she outlived him by a bit. The rest of them, they passed away in his lifespan. Imagine when we lose our children, how heavy it is. I can tell you that nobody and nobody at all can ever explain what the pain is to the one who's gone through it. They endure it themselves with the help of Allah. The sabr will come without the help of Allah. There's never going to be any form of comfort. Allah alone will comfort you for your loss. And you know what? Afdalul Khalqi, the best of creation, went through it not just once, but so many times. He shed tears when Ibrahim, his son, passed away. So much so, he was the one who taught us how to be strong and bear sabr. He says you must bear patience. He is the one who taught us how to bear patience. So when the Sahaba radiallahu anhum saw the tears, they questioned, what is this? Subhanallah, as though you are not supposed to cry. So it was quickly clarified. Innama hiya rahmatun ja'alaha Allahu fi ibadihi ruhama. These tears are not a sign of questioning Allah. These tears are not a sign of disagreeing with Allah. They are not a sign of being upset at qada and qadr. But rather these tears are a sign of the mercy that Allah puts in the hearts of those who are merciful to a degree. I'm crying, I'm going to miss my son. It's nothing wrong. Cry when you have to. Cry when you need to. Cry when it's about to come. When you hold back sometimes, it's not as good a feel as when you allow those tears to roll. Allow those tears to roll. Allah created tear glands and Allah gave them a purpose and Allah allows them to be released 
when certain emotions happen to be up and down. It's a human mechanism of coping. But Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best of creation, the perfect, the most noble of all prophets, the chosen by Allah Almighty. When the tears rolled, he quickly clarified, it's just a sign of mercy. May Allah make us merciful towards one another. Today, we've become a bit merciless. We are merciless. Let me take you through a statement of the same Nabi of Allah. Is he, your, is he not your Nabi? Is he not my Nabi? Is he not our Nabi? Do his statements and his method and his style and his sunnah, does all that not become part of the, the biggest means of our following in this world? What do I want to follow? Don't you say this is the messenger, he's my messenger, he's my Nabi, he was sent to me. Don't we say that? Allah sent him to you in person with your name. And he's going to ask you how re you responded. In fact, you get into your grave, you're going to be asked, Man Nabi Yuka. It's a question. And you will only know the response if you follow it. Otherwise, you won't know. You can learn it from now. You say, hey, you know, we're going to be asked questions in the grave. These three questions. Just ask them to me. Let me see if you know the answer. You can rattle them out morning, afternoon, evening. When you die, you won't know a thing because you didn't follow. When the Quran says, or Allah says, يُقَالُ لِصَاحِبِ الْقُرْآنِ اقْرَأْ وَارْتَقِي وَرَتِّلْ كَمَا كُنْتَ تُرَتِّلُ فِي الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ مَنْزِلَكَ عِنْدَ آخِرِ آيَةٍ تَقْرَأُهَا A person who's memorized the Quran will be told on the day of judgment, recite and ascend and continue ascending for indeed your position, your status will be upon the last verse that you are going to be able to read. So you start. You start with Surah Al-Fatiha. Where will you stop? No matter how solid your hif was in the dunya, your memory was in this world, you, your memory will fail right at the beginning if you did not establish your prayer. By the time in Surah Al-Baqarah, right at the beginning when you come to وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُ الزَّكَاةَ وَرُكَعُهُ مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ You won't be able to go beyond that because neither did you do iqamat is salah nor did you do ita is zakah nor did you do ruku' مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ you never prayed, you never prostrate, bowed with those who are bowing, meaning you're praying, and you never even gave your charities in a proper manner. You're stuck. But in the dunya, you never made a blunder. Subhanallah, you see what we're saying? So here is the Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the status, the highest. He just lost his son. And he is saying, we will not utter words that are displeasing to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We will only say that which is pleasing to Allah. What is it? It is, Inna lillahi ma akhada wa lahu ma a'ta wa kullu shay'in indahu bi ajalin musamma. Indeed, for Allah belongs that which he took away. It was always Allah. When Allah gave you something in this world, I promise you, my brothers, my sisters, you did not have it before. Allah gave it to you. Does he who gave it to you not have the right to snatch it away from you? And when he takes it away from you, if you're a believer and you're close to Allah and you're trying to follow the sunnah, don't you believe Allah will not let me down? I'm sure there is a better purpose for this to have happened. There must be some wisdom of Allah. So you lose a child, you don't know why you lost the child. But if you were to ask one day, Allah Almighty, show me if that child lived beyond the age of 13, upon which you took the child away, how would that child have grown up? You might be shocked and you will say, Oh Allah, I thank you for taking the child away. Before the child was a means of distress for me because of drugs and gambling and whatever else and so many issues that are happening on earth today. Allah says, you know what? We did you a favor. We just didn't give you children. Allahu Akbar. The favor of Allah upon you was that he did not give you children. That was the blessing because you didn't know and you don't know. Do you believe in Allah? Yes, keep on trying because in trying you get a reward. You get a full reward. Al-akhdu bil asbab. To try to achieve something you believe is beneficial. Ihris ala ma yanfa'uk wa sta'in billah wa la ta'jaz. The Prophet ﷺ says, don't be lazy. Work hard towards achieving that which you believe is beneficial. For you, work hard. Whether you're going to get it or not is only in the hands of Allah. So Allah sometimes does not give you something because he knows the blessing is in us not giving you. If we gave you, it would have been a means of distress for you. But you don't know. You don't realize. We know. We know the future. So going back where I said, we are merciless. When the same Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us, Man la yarham, la yurham. Whoever does not show mercy will not be shown mercy. And here we are mercilessly treating one another. 
No mercy in the way we talk, no mercy in the way we walk, no mercy in the way we do business, no mercy in the way we treat our families, no mercy in the way we treat humankind at large. Zero mercy. Then we are worried about why am I so depressed? Why is this happening to me? Why is that happening to me? Why am I this and why am I that? My brother, my sister, relax. Go back to Allah. Change your ways, your habits. Here is the Nabi of Allah. Allah did not send him to us in order for us to continue to say, My Nabi, my Nabi, my Nabi. My statement is there, but my actions are totally opposite. What's the point? I'm saying he's my Nabi. I follow him. I might be able to come for Salah. The other day I was speaking to someone and they told me about what someone else did to them. And they were asking me for guidance and I gave them a few words of advice based on what I believe. Perhaps maybe had they complained to the Prophet ﷺ, he would have said something similar. Perhaps. Based on that, I told him something. And he said, I just want to let you know who this person is. I said, I don't want to know. You told me, you gave me the gist of it. He said, for your information, if you look at him, He's a full emulation of what we believe the Sunnah is. Subhanallah. He reads his Salah in the first Saf. That's what it is. He doesn't miss his Salah. He has a Sabha in his hand. And he's flicking it. I mentioned this yesterday. He's flicking it. And while he's flicking it, he's swearing people. Are you counting the number of swear words? Or are you really making a car and dhikr? Some people have a habit. Salaamu Alaikum. How's it man? Are you well? Everything okay? And look what he's doing with his hands. Hey, you know, yesterday I went to town man. And I met a few people there. And they were telling, look at his fingers. What is this? This is a joke, man, because you are not making the adhkar. You are using it as a means of what? Say something, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, allahu akbar, allahumma salli ala. And whatever other durood you want to make in a proper way. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ashabihi wa barik wa sallim. Or simply sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is good. But for you to be swearing, screaming, shouting, maltreating, abusing, mercilessly, and you claim to follow the one who was sent as a mercy to mankind and to all other species. That's why we are here today. To revisit our relationship with this greatest of creation. How quick are we to judge people? How quick are we to pass statements? You don't know what the person sitting next to you is going through. They might never have had a home. They may not have had parents. They might be struggling with a job. They might not know what food they're going to eat. You don't know what struggles they have. They may not be able to afford the next meal. They probably don't know when they're coming or going. They might have lost their parents. They may have struggled with addictions and now they are trying to come up and you the one look at him and say, watch out, Basop, this guy is an addict. Oh, wait, are you not going to try? You know, you, if we had to write people off because of a sin they committed, we would all be written off without exception. What are you prepared to work on people? When you see someone doing bad, first thing we have in this age of social media is to expose them. Expose. Is that the sunnah of Nabi of Allah? Or do you make dua for them? Is that not a man who reads his shahada? Committing a sin does not automatically eject you from the fold of Islam. Sinful Muslim. We're all sinful Muslim on different levels. Some minor, some major. Some people are a little bit more major. May Allah forgive all of us and strengthen us. You don't know. You're going to be tested or your children may be tested. Who knows? We're not yet dead to be able to know how we ended. Because the winner is the one whom at the end they have won. Those are the winners. But that you could be a practicing person and who knows a little while later, everything could have gone. May Allah Almighty forgive us. Go, go easy on the people. You don't know. Work on them. You see someone, help them. Say a good word. The man is addicted to something, inshallah. The child is addicted to something, inshallah. With your dua, your help, your assistance, your positivity, your reminders, they will come through by the will of Allah. I had the good fortune of spending a little bit of time with Haji Bai Padia, rahmatullahi alayhi, some time back, 1992. Allahi, I recall the man early morning. Some of you might remember this. He would be in tahajjud weeping as though someone was beating him up. Wallahi. We used to get up when we were sitting in Atikaf in the masjid and we used to see this man in sujood literally crying to Allah. For what? I can tell you what. Because I asked him. I was young. I said, everything okay? He says, you know, we see things. Firstly, we are weak. We cry for ourselves. May Allah strengthen us. Secondly, you see things. You, you're trying to help the ummah. Obviously, his work was to go around reminding the people of the deen of Allah. You cry at a condition. You complain to Allah. Oh Allah, today I saw this guide this child. Today I saw that. We came across this case. Guide these people. Help them make easy for them and so on and so forth. And guess what? That is the way. Not like us today. Flag bearers. We are swearing one another. <laughs> Mercy you from where? Wait, have you tried crying on the, on the sajjada? Have you tried crying in sujood? 
Have you tried making dua for people? That was the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam sunnah. When they maltreated him in Ta'if, Allahumma hdi qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamun. Forget about Ta'if, before Ta'if, when his own family members and his own clan members maltreated him, do you know what he says? Allahumma a'izz al-Islam bi ahad al-umarayni. Allahu Akbar, oh Allah, strengthen Islam by the acceptance of Islam of one of these two powerful disbelievers. Hey, that's a dua. That's my Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is your Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's who we follow. He checked out the enemy. He saw the strongest from among them, two guys. And he made a dua to Allah, Oh Allah, if one of these two comes to Islam, the strength we will get will be tremendous. Guide one of the two of them. Are you prepared to look at the enemies and make that dua? Wallahi, we've arrived at such a sad condition that we look at the friends and we curse. The opposite direction, totally opposite. Rather than look at the enemies and make a dua that Allah bring them to the deen. You have someone whom you probably know, he's a Muslim already, and he makes five salah and he does a lot of goodness. You'll find reason why to curse him. For what? Where's the Nabi of Allah? Where does he feature in your life, in your akhlaq, in your character? Aisha radiallahu anha was asked about the character of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She just gave one answer. What should you say? You want to describe a mountain. He just, she just said, Kana khuluquhu al-Qur'an. His character was the Qur'an. Give importance to the Qur'an. The recitation. You know, we heard a melodious recitation. I want to tell you something that I noticed. From the first time I came to Durban many years ago, early 2000s. Not just in Durban, throughout our country, and not just in our country, throughout the globe, there is an awakening. The recitation of the Quran has become such that it's almost perfected by the youngsters today, compared to what it was before. When I was young, we used to get excited. People, hey, Imam Saab, can you lead our salah? Today, I'll run away. Why? I want to listen to it from others. They recite superbly, beautiful. The Qari who read before us, so melodious, I didn't even want it to end. I thought to myself, let him take another 10 minutes of my time. It's fine. That's how beautiful it was. I enjoyed it thoroughly. And in our midst, there are other reciters equally beautiful. Give importance to the Quran. My brothers, my sisters, the beauty of the Quran should show in your akhlaq. That hadith I mentioned does not say, yuqalu lil qari'i. It says, sahibil Quran. A person who has the Quran, not only on his tongue, in his heart, in his character, he's a living Quran. You learn it, you, you put it into practice, you teach it to others. The best person in existence is the one who dedicates his life to the Quran. Hands down, that's the best. Here is the hadith. The Prophet ﷺ says, Khayrukum. And Khayrukum here in this hadith means total goodness. The best from amongst all of you. Man ta'allama al-Qur'an wa allamahu. The one who learns the Qur'an and teaches it. The dunya, this world might not give them importance. I swear by Allah. In the eyes of Allah, they are the VIPs. You know what the hadith says? Same Nabi that we are celebrating. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know what he says? He says that on the day of judgment, there will be a group of people known as Ahlul Quran, the people of the Quran. Who are they? He describes them. Alladhinahum ahlullahi wa khasatuhu. The people who are, who belong to Allah. They are known as, these are the people of Allah. And they are his special ones. Special ones. Today you're a friend of an important person. And they look at you and they say, oh, this is the guy. He's the buddy of that guy there. Who's that guy there? Another important person. Hey, what if they had to say that about Allah? What if Allah declared, hey, hey, that's my friend. That's why my brothers, my sisters in our midst, we are seated here, not just amongst us, but even in our communities and societies, every community, every society has certain individuals who are very close to Allah. You don't know who they are. Unsuspecting. They're not going to come. Hey, I'm a wali. Guys, I'm a wali. <laughs> they're not going to come and say that. No chance. In fact, you won't pick them up. Until sometimes after they passed away, you realize what you lost. There are people known as awliyaullah, the friends of Allah. There are many. Every community, society, every place, a few. You may know them, you may not know them. In fact, you wouldn't really in a rush because they are not going to come and show. Now Allah Almighty tells us through the blessed lips of the same Nabi of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man li waliyan faqad bil harbi. Hadith Qudsi. 
Whoever harms a friend of mine, I've announced war against them. The fact that you don't know who's the friends of Allah, Allah's friend can be anyone. It doesn't mean they are perfect, but it means they are close to Allah. The Adam alayhi salam, was he not a chosen by Allah? There was a sin committed, wasn't there? Did that remove him from the mercy of Allah? No. In fact, that brought him into the mercy of Allah when he saw Tawbah. So imagine, if you don't know who are the friends of Allah, you would be foolish if you maltreated even one of them because you don't know. Your life shall be turned upside down when you mess with the friend of Allah. That's what Allah is telling you. Is it worth it to mess with anyone? Improve your character, improve your conduct. There's no point in outwardly looking so religious and you're swearing and you're screaming and yelling. Which Nabi of Allah taught that every single one of them had brilliant akhlaq and character. Do you know there is a hadith with the same Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wherein he says Ma min nabiyin illa wa ra'al ghanama. There is no Nabi that has ever been sent by Allah, no prophet ever sent by Allah except at a certain stage in their lives. They were shepherds looking after a flock of sheep. Why? Training from Allah, what else? Wisdom of Allah, what else? Plan of Allah, what else? Imagine if you are going to work with animals, sheep. How much patience do you need? All the messengers were trained with sheep first. You can't even speak to the sheep. But trust me, miraculously, they communicated with the sheep. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from a young age, he never ever had any issues with any creatures. They were all almost subservient in front of him. The camel came to him complaining about its owner and how they were overburdening him. There was only a movement of the head of the camel and a small sound and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a movement and then called the owner and warned him and said, you are maltreating this animal. What communication happened? Miracle, miracle of a Nabi. There were so many other miracles. Imagine a camel coming to you and complaining about, hey, the guy puts too much on my back, man. It's hard, can't manage. Today we treat human beings worth, worse than that. A guy works for you, you pay him a tuppence of 5,000 rands a month and you expect him to work like a horse, not even a horse. Doesn't it happen? See, from amongst us, some of the guys are nodding their heads because you must be working for someone who does that. The other side won't nod their heads. They're going to just look at you and say, mm, this guy touched the nerve here. But that's the Nabi we're celebrating. Go easy on those who work for you. Pay them well and on time. I swear, any business you have, any business, if you would like Barakah, pay people properly and on time. If you have that, trust me, you go to Jannah, you will have the greatest success in this world. Thousands, if not millions, will make dua for you. And you know what? You enter into the mercy of Allah. Here is the Prophet The same man that we're celebrating, and I'm saying this so much, just to keep you on your toes. Remember, what are we talking about? What are we celebrating? You know what he says? A businessman who is honest, upright, trustworthy, He'll be resurrected with the prophets of Allah. Why? He was upright. Business is not easy. You start seeing money. The more you get, the more miserly you become. The big, big businesses sometimes, sometimes, there are definitely exceptions. Sometimes they don't pay and they won't pay on time and they won't pay properly and they'll squeeze you until you're almost choking. But that's what it is. Non-Muslim business down the road. They'll promote you, they'll pay you, they look after you, they give you whatever and so on. And Muslim business, they squeeze you. They call you at two in the morning. And if you don't want to come next day, you got a letter. What does it say? Fire. Come on, relax. We are the Ummah. It should be the other way around. We should be exemplary. When this city and other cities in this country face the challenges of the rioters, Wallahi, we got up and we showed a little bit of what the Ummah is all about. Look at the difference it made. Am I right or wrong? If the Nabi of Allah was here, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would have told us to go out full fledged and give whatever we have. Because let me take you back and tell you that Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told the people who were total strangers in Medina Munawwara, listen, we have a crisis. The crisis is that there are people coming from another city altogether and they are going to come here. We can't have these people as refugees. What's the term refugee? Is, is it not a belittlement? The guy says, where are you? Where are you from? I come from that country. What are you doing here? I'm a refugee. Isn't that something cheap statement that's really low, very low refugee. 
you have a right to this earth like how I have because I'm born the way you were born. Nothing gives anyone else a greater right to be on earth. You were born, I was born on the earth. That's why I'm here. So if you're born on a land, you have rights on that land because it doesn't belong. It's not total ownership of someone. It's only later on that we have these political divides and a few rules and laws. In the law of Allah, you're born here, you have rights here. It's over because how they were born, you were born. Nothing gives them a bigger right than yours. The Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know what he said? He said there is something known as al muakha the fostering of brotherhood. They say, what is that? He said, each family taking another family. Each family taking one family. Of who? People you don't know. We're going to choose for you. Are you ready to do that today? Even I will tell you, honestly, it's a tough one. I'm not joking because everyone's just looking at me. Just say, no, we can't. It's over. Because we're not on that level. Once I was asked this question years ago, you're ready to take in a family you don't know, to live with you indefinitely, share half of your wealth, share half of everything. I say, you know what? I'm not a Sahabi. Allahu Akbar. Yeah, it's a factual answer. And guess what? The sad reality is, the more you have, the less prepared you are to do that because now your items are posh. To scratch a posh is very different from scratching the polo. Remember that. You won't even share a little bit of your seat in the car. Forget about it. You get a new car, you tell the kids, no eating anymore in the car. I did it as well. <laughs> Once the car is a bit old, they can have anything and drop it and sticky hands and everything. It's okay, it's gone. What happened? Ah, this car is now old. We buy another one. Let's see. And everything, the rules come back again quickly. Man loves the dunya so much. The Nabi of Allah's mission on earth was to remind you and I that you were created for the hereafter. Your time in this world is temporary to, to get the best abode in the hereafter. That's why when you came on earth, you came with nothing. While you're on earth, you started fighting for things. For what? Hey, my clothes, my watch, my this, my car, my house, my wife, my family, my kids, my brother, my what? My, everything is my, my, my. And guess what? When you died, you went back how you were without a single thing that you found on earth. What was the war all about? What was the fight all about? You came with nothing. You went back with nothing. In the middle, you made enemies. You swore people. You shouted them. You maltreated them. Everything is written. Everything is written against you or for you. I rather greet nicely, speak nicely, be humble, talk properly. At least I go away with some good amal, good deeds. What was your point? Today is an awakening, a day to wake up for me and for all of us to say you came on earth with nothing. Right now you are here. Pack away good deeds because I tell you what, when you leave, you're leaving with zero besides what you did. Amal. Hey, what's the war about? I stopped talking to my brother for 20 years. Why? Because hey, there was a million rands in the middle. Hey, you know, his wife was like this and like, come on, relax. Throw the million. I say, you know what, my brother, you took a million. Here's another million. You are my brother. I love you. We don't want the W's to come in the way. What are the W's? I'll leave it to your discretion. So I tell you something. Wealth is a problem. Never mind. It's okay. Allah will give me more. I'm not saying just give up your rights. You're allowed to stand for them. You should. But do it in a dignified manner. When I make a mistake, or when you make a mistake, think about how the Nabi of Allah وسلم, would have dealt with the blunder or the error, or I disagree with you. How would he have dealt with it? He did deal with it. Utmost respect. He used to speak to the leaders of Quraysh with utmost respect. He sent letters to the Kuffar leaders across the globe. Such beautiful words to up to this day. They are there clear to the point, respectful, no disrespect in them. Here's the message. Take it or leave it. You take it. It'll help you. You don't. It's going to be against you. Respect. Today we've lost respect for one another. The Prophet of Allah is teaching us to respect animals to start with. Where are we? Then we say, hey, my Nabi, my Nabi. Yes, we are. We put in our houses, we put big, big frames, the, the, so many names referred to as Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there's so many different names of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And mashallah, hey, the light he memorized not only the names of Allah, but even the, some of the names of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hey, mashallah, I'm happy. But what akhlaq do you have? What character do you have? When you pass away, Allah's not going to ask you, did you know all those names? More important than that, he's going to ask you about your deen and your akhlaq. The same characteristics that you have to look at when you're getting married, your religion, your closeness to Allah and your character, your deeds. What did you do? So my beloved brothers, my sisters, remember, if we want to achieve the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to show mercy. And that's why we are taught. It's not a hadith, but it's a, it's a statement of the people of old. Kama tadinu tudana. How you treat others, so you shall be treated. In a nutshell, that's what it means. 
So may Allah Almighty grant us goodness and ease. My brothers, my sisters, going through the life of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he faced challenge upon challenge. People said things about him, they maltreated him, and he faced a lot in his life. I tell you, each time he faced a challenge, it was an elevation of status, even though he was already the highest. When you are first in your class, and the mark was 86%, but that was the top grade. I'm giving you a small example. Surely now you're going to work harder. You're still the top of the class, but you want to achieve 9900 perhaps. The day you get 100, you say, hey, mashallah, I've achieved. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the example is far higher in the case of the Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But when he used to stand at night in Salah, he used to stand so long in optional voluntary prayer that his legs were swollen. And his wife says, hey, you are a person forgiven. You are a person of Jannah. You are a person of this and a person of that. You are so high in status. You already know your status. You're standing in Salah until the time when your feet are swollen. He says, ya Aisha, hey, my wife Aisha, afala akuna abdan shakura, hey. I know the status and all. Sorry, the and all didn't come because I'm in Durban. I know the status, but at the same time, shouldn't I be thankful to Allah? Shouldn't I be grateful to Allah? Yeah, yeah. Allah's given me. I want to tell you something else. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum who participated in the Battle of Badr were told, I'malu ma shi'tum fa inni qad ghafartu lakum. Do as you please, I've forgiven you. Not one of them committed a single sin. Imagine if we were told that. One wonders we hear with all these youngsters have gone. Even the olders. Allah, Allah strengthen us. That's why we're not told that. Those were Sahaba. When they were told, do what you want, you're already in Jannah. It made them stronger. They were now vying for position in Jannah. I want to be with the Prophet. So, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so much so that Abu Bakr Umar radiallahu anhuma, they chose because they could to be buried next to him as well. I want to be the closest to this man. I tell you what, invitation. I invite you my brothers, my sisters, to be the closest you can to the Prophet ﷺ by leading your life holistically in the best possible way. Today, we are seated here. Each one of us has our struggles. We all know unique struggles. Each one of us is trying to get closer. Each one of us wants to achieve things. I want to invite you to be stronger for the sake of Allah, for the sake of the deen and the messenger ﷺ. Imagine how proud he would be of you and I when he recognizes us simply because we were dedicated followers of his. He recognize. In this world, they might have treated you badly. Never mind. It's okay. For as long as Allah Almighty knows, you know. I tried my best and guess what? Between me and Allah, I have changed so many bad things that were in me. I quit this habit, that habit, I became strong, I got up in the morning, I did. And every day, day in, day out, day in, day out, my focus was to please Allah. And my focus was one day I want to be in the companionship of Nabi Muhammad Wasallam. Allah will give it to you. Allah will give it to you and I. Similarly, this heart is a very, very interesting organ. Hadith says, Behold, in this body, there is a piece of flesh. If it is pure, clean and good, the whole body will be pure, clean and good. And if it is corrupted, bad, sinful, the whole body will be corrupted and bad. Behold, it is the heart. Work on your heart. Don't think for a moment that your heart is perfect. Work on it. Jealousy, hatred, enmity, malice, filth. Take it. Work on it. Don't be jealous of people. Allah gave them. Allah don't have this deception, this evil intent in your heart. No. Treat people with respect. Give them. Be happy for them. Don't hold that malice. The hadith of jealousy speaks about how it will consume your Good deeds in the same way that fire consumes a dry log. All these statements are part and parcel of the celebration of today of the greatest of creation and the most noble of all prophets of Allah. Because wallahi, if it was not for him, we wouldn't even be sitting here today and we wouldn't even be able to talk about these things. What great teachings. What great teachings. Have you noticed something? Everything we are uttering, Quran sent by Allah through whom? 
Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The hadith, every single piece of advice, the way we carry ourselves, what we're, what we supposed to do, everything taught to us by whom? Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You cannot for a moment let go of his teachings. Not for a moment. You're a believer. You call yourself an ummati. So make an effort. That's the.